Hey YouTube family, it's Raven back to provide you with another right on time word from the Lord. <clears throat> and the word is God says focus on eating. Okay, so how did I get this word? So <laughs> something I always say to my kids when they're at the table. So I have Prince Augustus, he's six, and then Roz Dog, a little Rosalind, she is three. And one of the biggest challenges in our day is getting them to just sit down and eat their food. And anybody who has children, you know what I'm talking about, okay? I'm just like, just eat, just eat your food. And I always, one of the things I always say, just focus on eating, just focus on eating. And they're trying to play with their toys that they sneak to the table or fight with each other or just everything. Just, just focus on eating, please. <laughs> we need to get that nutrients in your body, okay? Because a lot of times they'll just, you know, I'm done, I don't want to, I want to go play, I want to go do this and then, their food sits there, gets bad, I throw it out, and then they're, I'm hungry. So I was saying that to them the other day, focus on eating, and Jesus says, my people, my people need to focus on eating. Okay, so what God is saying here is, you need to focus on eating, okay? Eating his word, being nourished by the things of God, okay? The things that are going to grow your faith, right? So my children need to eat their food, so that they can grow to be big and strong. <laughs> okay, they need food to grow. And so you need food to grow as well. You need nourishment daily to stay active for the things of God. So the Lord is telling you that just as my children, you know, stay focused, eliminate the distractions, get those, I always say, get those toys off that table right now. How'd they get here? <laughs> okay. How did Batman get up on my table? <laughs> All right. Get him out of here. They're always sneaking toys to the table. Oh. And the Lord is saying, eliminate distractions, okay? Put away the toys. Put away the things that are distracting you. And some of these things could, that doesn't necessarily mean they're all, all sinful or negative, but anything that's distracting you from getting into the Word of God, okay? And you're going to know because it's going to be coming up in your spirit. So television, you're watching. It comes to the end of the day or the beginning of the day or, or any time that you have extra time. And that time, you know, I need to spend that time with the Lord. And you said, well, instead, I'm going to scroll through social media. Social media is going to be a big distraction for a lot of you guys. Uh, television, hobbies, and it's okay. It's okay to have all these things. None of these things are, are inherently bad, inherently sinful, right? But if they're taking, if they're becoming an idol in your life, or they're taking the time away that you need to be spending eating the Word of God, okay, getting with your Father, getting in the Word by yourself, then you need to start eliminating some of those things. Okay, so he's saying, yes, think about that. What is preventing me from getting in the word of God? Because if you're a believer of Jesus Christ, you need to be getting in the word by yourself every single day. So there's a time to get in the word with other believers, like a community Bible study, or you're going to church and you're hearing the word spoken to you. If you listen to my videos, I'm gonna give you scriptures that you can meditate on with every word. But the Lord wants you to get in, uh, here the distractions come. Don't text me right now. <laughs> okay, so the Lord wants you to get in the word by yourself, okay? And to just spend that time with him. That's how you're worshiping and communicating with him. He speaks to us in a lot of different ways. Signs, numbers, all the all these different things. The main way that he's going to speak to you is through his word. And a lot of times those signs and wonders that he's bringing in are only going to confirm what his, or I should say, all the time you should every time you're getting like a sign and wonder or song or something that's speaking to you there should always be some kind of scripture in alignment with it that the, the lord is speaking this to me okay so get in the word eliminate those distractions focus on eating okay the lord is also saying that a lot of you need to be um, cultivating a well-balanced diet so what does that mean youtube including me <laughs> hi <laughs> Is blowing up with a lot of a lot of voices a lot of new voices that are that are speaking into your life this is a good thing this is a good thing this is a move of the Lord he's raising up a lot of voices a lot of prophetic voices a lot of just people speaking words of encouragement to his children there's also a lot of false voices so you need to be using a lot of discernment making sure you're testing every single word including mine <laughs> okay I am perfect all right but the Lord is saying you know a well-balanced diet you can't just be fed off of rhema words so I would align myself with giving rhema words like right on time words um, words of encouragement okay just to kind of meet you right where you are if you're clicking on this it's just it's, I'm just trying to meet you right where you are but <laughs> um, I'm not a pastor okay so we need we need a lot of different people in our lives 
All right, let's shape this. I'm not a pastor and I'm not like actively a teacher. I can teach things, but I wouldn't say my spiritual gift is teaching. Like the fivefold ministry, right? We have pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers and apostles. I'm not I'm not a teacher. Okay? So my channel isn't to teach you in-depth scripture. So what I'm saying is if you're following if you're only following people who are delivering rhema words like right now words to you, uh, you need to you need to kind of pray for the Lord to open that up because you need to be listening to sermons as well. Like you need to be listening to pastors and teachers who can who can get you really deep into the word. Like there's a time for like a right now word. I always say, you know, like uh, well think of a nutrition like um, a diet, well balanced diet, right? So you need a lot of different things. You know, you need your your vegetables and your proteins. Or for looking at it like on a fitness standpoint, you know, like your macros, like good healthy fats, carbohydrates. Oh my gosh, what's my other one? Protein. Okay. And so I always think like, what what would I be? Think of me as like green tea. <laughs> At first, the Lord said, I thought I heard the Lord saying coffee or like energy, energy, like a pump, like even like a cup of coffee. And I'm like, nah, I want to be green tea because green tea, okay, what does green tea do? It does have health benefits to it. So listening to me, like you can benefit from this. Absolutely. Okay. So antioxidants. And what was the other thing? Uh, green tea can help you burn fat. Amen to that. I'm all about people burning that spiritual fat. Okay. <laughs> We'll talk about that more because I love talking how my fitness life parallels to my Christian life. Amen. But I'm like, I'm like a cup of green tea. Okay. I'm trying to give you like a pump to get through the day, like an energy boost to, to get through the day. Okay. Just to kind of give you like, get you pumped up, whoo, focused, you know, it's like that kind of thing. But you, you need other people speaking into your life. You need to be in a church, listening to sermons, um, listening to teachers, going in depth in the study, studies. Like there's a time to kind of just flow with the word. Like you're getting in the word you're just flowing we're hearing stuff we're flowing okay then there's a time to really study the word too and we gotta we gotta balance that out we gotta be doing both of it as the spirit leads okay so yeah the lord said don't be binge eating rhema words or rhema like prophetic words so i like to use the word rhema because it's like right right now word right on time word but um prophetic words too there's a lot of there's a lot of prof prophetic channels. So make sure that's not all you're consuming, okay? Don't be binge eating those. Because you need to be following pastors and teachers and prophets. And and also too, like you need to be practicing worship. Like getting in, like you need to be worshiping the Lord. You need to be getting that one-on-one -on -one time, you and Jesus worshiping. That could look different for some of you. Some of you get your worship on when you're working out. That's me. All right. Some of you are dancers. Um, that's your form of worship. You're an artist. Whatever it is, music, okay? It doesn't have to be just one thing. You know, I always say worship isn't just you go to church and you're you're putting your hands up, hallelujah. That's a great way to worship. I love worshiping like that. But to just song to song and stuff, but that's not the that's not the only way to worship. So worship needs to be a part of your diet, okay? Acts of service. So serving in some kind of capacity, whatever that looks like. You always say people get distracted, they say squirrel. There's literally a squirrel running behind my car. But uh stay focused, Raven. Uh where we have acts of service, serving the church, serve some form of giving back. So whether that's with your time, energy, resources, you are a child of God, you have gifts and talents, you need to be serving as well, okay? And that's going to create a healthy, a well-balanced diet for you, and you're going to be a healthy member of the body of Christ. And if you guys didn't know, one of the big moves that the Lord is doing, or what I believe from the things that I've been hearing and seeing and everything, one of the moves that he's doing is he's trying to, uh, he's trying to create a healthier body in like the body of Christ. He's trying to make it healthier by, by equipping his people, like we're to, to be working together. So yeah, like the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, all of us are, are working together. Okay. So we're working together we're getting the body moving the body's exercising okay but we're also consuming the right content we're trying to get away from these false gospels false teachings all of this like we're going to start consuming good things and a lot of you he's doing that because you know everything has purpose our physical bodies are a metaphor of the body of christ i'm going to talk a lot about that on my channel guys i learned a lot from being in the fitness world but 
a lot of you are having stronger convictions to physically to physically start stewarding your bodies well to to honor god with your bodies so god is cleaning up your diets like you're having that conviction like i need to start eating better that's coming from the lord that's coming from the lord that's part of the movement like america is uh has some serious health concerns and a lot of it has to do with the spirit of gluttony which a lot of people don't want to talk about but we're going to talk about it on this channel okay because it's a real spirit and it is a sin don't be condemned if you've fallen into that but that's something that needs to be addressed in the body of christ where the body of christ is you know is not healthy and a lot of people in the body of christ their physical bodies aren't healthy so health health is a he's trying to make a healthy body that's something that he's doing right now so he needs you to do your part, okay, <laughs> spiritually and physically. Something else the Lord is saying to some of you is that you need to be in a church. Some of you are falling prey to people online who are talking about, uh, what is it? You don't need to be in a church. Chosen people can't be in churches or they're, they're, they're kind of they're using the chosen title to separate themselves from the body of Christ. No, if you're if you're operating in the prophetic, which many of you are that are on my channel, you already know <laughs> you already know that that God isolates you for a season, right? You it's part of it's part of your training, the isolation for a season. And that's to get you really close to him so you can hear from him. Okay, but that's like I said, it's seasonal, but you're training, you're taken into isolation to equip you and prepare you for the ministry because you're going back into the body of Christ to help it okay like your gifting is going to be used in the body of christ the isolation is seasonal you need to be in a community and god is telling some of you you're spending too much time um online just binge watching only people who are functioning in the prophetic and you're saying everybody else they're against us but i'm telling you right now that we're a body we're all working together we need to work together the body has to work together okay the muscles has to work together to move forward, to be strong, to be healthy, so they're not your enemy. But yes, I know if you're um, if you're a prophet or you function in prophecy, you're a chosen person. Yeah, a lot of times the body of Christ, a lot of members of the body of Christ do not understand your gifting. You've been rejected a lot. I get that. So sometimes it can be hard to find the right church, but seek the Lord on it because He will lead you to the right church. And in your season of isolation, you might be pulled out of a church. But like I said, it's always for a season. If you find yourself long term, not in a church body, like a physical community. Yes, I know that the church is not a building. There it is right there. I don't go to that church. <laughs> but I like that it's always in the background. I can see it from my house. It's not a church building, but that's a cop out. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> if, you're a, if you're a believer of Jesus Christ, you need to be in a church building find the right one you need to be in a community you need to be held accountable you need to be you need to make some friends you need to be helping people with your giftings and you need to be serving others that's how it goes i've heard the term rogue prophets before rogue christians that means i'm just doing this by myself just me and jesus flying solo no that is dangerous even the word rogue i can't tell you the exact definition but it's not it's not a good word do you know what I mean? Like, eh, look it up and you'll see what I mean. So the Lord is, he's, he's correcting some of you in this hour. You're not a rogue prophet. The body of Christ is not against you. They might not understand you, but that doesn't mean they're against you. Okay. Let's lose this. Uh, yeah. Let's lose this. They're against me kind of mindset. No, you know what the church needs? You guys know what the church needs, and I got so many words I'm going to be delivering on this. The church needs some good listeners. Jesus Christ needs some good listeners and some team players. He needs some team players. Some of you need to just go play a sport. Play a sport, join, join the military. Figure out what it means to be a team player, to work on a team, because that's what the body of Christ is. We're team players, and sometimes we don't always all get along. That's fine. We have grace for each other. Sometimes God moves us from one church, and listen to him because you need, if you're, if I'm speaking to you, you're, you've been rejected, you're trying to go rogue because everybody rejects you, you don't have a, there's not a place for you, pray to the Lord, okay, he will send you to the right place where you can be used, and a lot of people are popping up on YouTube, including me, I don't have a church that I can like be actively used. That's why the Lord allows me to come on this channel and give words to you because 
guess what? I've been rejected a lot too. A lot of churches don't want to use me, but that doesn't mean that I don't have a church community. I'm kind of in a transition right now where I'm not at, I don't have a home church, but I would desire one. I, I go to church every Sunday, so I'm listening to sermons, I'm worshiping, and I'm praying for the Lord to put me in the right church. And he will, and he will, once I'm into, you know, like into my promised land. So a lot of you, like I said, you're going to go into transition period. So you might be switching churches. There might be a season where he has you out of a physical church. You're watching things online, but it will always be seasonal. And there should always be a desire in your heart. This is kind of, this is kind of going to tell you where you're at. There should be a desire in your heart to be in a church, to be in a church. Like it's isolation season for anybody who's in isolation season. I've been in isolation season for quite some time. I don't like it. I like, I shouldn't say I don't like it. I like it because I've, I've been able to really strengthen my relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm closer to him than I ever have been before. And I like that. I like everything I've learned. And I, and I like, I like it because I know that it was needed. I know that it needed to happen for the things that he has for me, but I don't like it as in, um, I'm not able to be in communication or be around a lot of people. I do not like that. I'm insanely extroverted. It's like a form of torture for me to be in isolation. And I want to be in a church body. I want to have community. I want to have real genuine relationships. I want to be working on a team, seeing growth in the congregation. Okay. I want all that. And you should desire that too. You should desire that too. A real, real time people. Okay. Okay, and then one last thing too. The Lord did want me to address something. I've had um, somebody in my comment section write about teaching as a woman. So like, how are you up on here? Don't you, don't you know the word? The Lord says that women should remain silent. They should not teach. And the Lord actually brought me to the scripture. So he, he popped that up within 24 hours. It's 1 Corinthians 14, 3, 4. I'm not gonna read through it, but paraphrasing. You know, this is the scripture, the controversial scripture where Paul says, women should not speak. They should only listen to their husbands and be silent in church. Okay, so I know that this is this is one that is kind of gray. Okay, but I wanted you guys to know that, I, like I said before, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not trying to hold any kind of authority over you on this channel. Like I said, I'm just, I'm here to give you a word of, a word of encouragement, trying to give you a pump. Okay, trying to be ob obedient to the call on my life. Use the gifts that the Lord has given me. I align a lot of my life with Acts 420, which is, I cannot but help of speak of what I've seen and heard. The Lord speaks to me through vision and hearing. So I, I see what he's doing. I hear what he's doing. And it's so exciting. I want to share it with everybody else. Okay. And, and that's what I do. That's what I'm doing is I'm sharing what the Lord is speaking to me. He gives me really great revelation all the time. And it's too good to keep to myself. And he has called me to start this channel. This was not just a pop up right now you know, okay, whim, I'm going to do that. No, the Lord has been prompting me to start this channel for a long time. And I was saying no, because I'm not the biggest fan of social media. And I tried to tell him no. And he says, no, you need to do it. Okay. So this is me being obedient, answering the call on my life. And I'm not a teacher. I'm not trying to shepherd you. I know I do have knowledge of the fivefold ministry and the functions in the church. And I'm not trying to shepherd you. I'm not trying to have any kind of authority over men. I'm not, none of that, okay? But the Lord is saying, if you're a man and you're watching this channel and you do have a conviction about women talking about scripture or, you know, doing what I'm doing, that my channel is probably not for you. So just don't subscribe, get on the buttons, do not recommend this channel, never see my face again, okay? So follow your convictions. But the Lord is also saying to check your heart motive behind it. So I'm not saying anybody who's putting that is necessarily wrong. That could be your own conviction, but make sure you're checking checking your heart behind it, okay? Because I too have convictions about different positions that women are in. Maybe that might surprise some of you, but uh, I don't despise authority at all. I want to be under authority. So I know what the word says about governmental authority, okay? I'm respectful to governmental authority. 
I'm respectful to any kind of authority in my life. I was in the military for seven years. I mean, I took my leadership very seriously. I submitted to my leadership. I submitted to my authority. I submit to Jesus Christ, okay? Once I submit to my church, and when I get to my, my home church, I will submit to my leaders if they are following the Holy Spirit, okay? And yes, I have been given a marriage promise, so... I submit, I will submit to my husband and, you know, and I, and I will listen to him. And, you know, if he were to say, you know, I'm uncomfortable with you doing that YouTube thing. Like I would respect him. And apart from that, that'd be something me and him would talk to about the Lord. But a lot of these things guys are different convictions that we have. And I'm always about people following their convictions as long as they are from the Holy Spirit. Okay. But it's important to not just say something because that's what our church, our own church believes because there is things that are absolutely sinful, but then there are things that are just different convictions or up for interpretation, okay? So, but the Lord has given me the green light go to, to start this converse, or to start this channel. And, and yeah, I mean, he makes it pretty clear that I need to be delivering these words, that they're right on time words for, <clears throat> for you guys. And I don't want to not share them, okay? Like I said, think of me as Think of me as green tea, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pump you up, give you some antioxidants, okay? <clears throat> Get some excitement going in you, and um, help maybe burn off some fat, maybe burn off some things that you don't need, okay? Speaking directly into your life. So the scripture for this was Joshua 8.1. Oh no, where's my battle Bible? My battle Bible right here. Somebody actually in my comments was asking what version this was. It is an NIV from 2012. I actually got this when I went to basic training. It was one of my first Bibles and it's stuck around. But I'm going to read Joshua 1, 8 to you. I've been getting the number 18 a lot. That's a repetitive number that follows me. A lot of times the Lord speaks to me through it. Um, bondage, as in a lot of people are in spiritual bondage right now. I need to be praying and waging war against that but I believe he I got this scripture earlier for another word and then it's 1 8 so 18 so it's something that he wanted me to speak to you guys okay so this would be a good meditation scripture for you okay keep this book the bible all right of the law always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it okay then you will be prosperous and successful so not prosperous as in you know money we don't believe in the prosperity gospel but prosperous in the lord successful in the in the things that the lord has you to do but you need to be getting in the word on your own being nourished and filled up by the word of god you and jesus in his book okay eat it up Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. <laughs> or another scripture that's coming to mind too. I think it might be in Ezekiel. I'm going to link it below when I find it. It's, uh, you know, eating the scrolls and they taste sweet as honey. You know, like the word is good. It's nourishing. This book is a living, active book. It will nourish your soul. It'll nourish you spiritually, Okay. And it will, it should, what it should do, you're getting nourished spiritually. It should manifest in the physical. So you should look pretty, pretty healthy in the physical too. If you're, so we say that Holy Spirit glow, <laughs> let the Holy Spirit just flow through you. It's better than any skincare you'll do. Okay. <laughs> and it'll give you a lot of joy. And so Holy Spirit glow, but yes, be focus on eating, focus on getting in the word. Okay. Eliminate distractions. Anything that's pulling you away from spending that time with Jesus Christ, eating up the word, worshiping your father. Okay. And make sure you're in a church community or actively seeking a church community. When he pulls you out, out of the wilderness, out of the isolation season, get community. Don't, don't go rogue. Don't go rogue. It doesn't been, it's not going to benefit you and it's not going to benefit the body of Christ. Okay. We're working on a team. Amen. <laughs>